So let me please introduce already the next speaker, which can start preparing the slide. The next speaker is uh, Juan Galvis, and his work will be uh, about a semantic, seg a semantic seg segmentation based approach for navigation in a simulated urban environment. Thanks to the organizers for the opportunity and to the attendees for being here for this presentation. Um, like uh, Eliseo mentioned, uh, I am presenting a semantic segmentation based approach for navigation in a simulated urban environment. My name is Juan Galvis and I am a systems integration engineer at the Directed Energy Research Center, where I have been working on projects related to signal and image processing, uh, deep learning and embedded systems. Uh, in addition to that, I have uh, experience in robotics. Actually, over the last years, I have worked on a wide range of projects in this field, particularly for um, ground vehicles and self-driving vehicles both in uh, industry and academia. Some of these projects actually are made, uh, have been made publicly available on GitHub. But let's go with the, with the topic. So today's presentation is organized as follows. First, I will do a brief introduction about um, mobile robots. Then I will present the formal formulation of the, of the planning problem, which is important to understand the, the proposed deep learning approach for navigation. Then I will explain the, the planning algorithm, which is the dynamic window approach, and then how everything was implemented using ROS2. And finally, some simulation results in Gazebo and conclusions. So first, um, it's undeniable that mobile robots are becoming increasingly important for a wide range of industries. We can see them today in warehouses, in distribution centers, in manufacturing, in hospitals, in agriculture, um, mostly for the fulfillment of logistics related tasks. Moreover, we, we can say that the future uh, holds a further expansion of mobile robots into unstructured environments like roads, sidewalks, and homes. And this, is, this can be seen clearly with, for example, the, the self-driving cars boom or important advancements being made in service robots and the emergence of mobile robots in uh, last mile delivery. In general, the, an autonomous vehicle or an autonomous robot consists of the following components. We have a sensing subsystem, which um, basically takes data from the physical world through sensors. Then this data is further processed in modules like perception and localization. In the first case, to generate a representation of the environment and in the second case, to uh, estimate the robot state. This information is then used for in a, in a planning subsystem that cre basically creates a path to a given goal. And then we have a control subsystem that is in charge of making sure that the robot follows a given path by giving the appropriate actuator commands. So this is in general how, how an autonomous mobile robot works. In this presentation, I will focus on how to generate a simplified environment representation using deep learning and how to use that representation to perform planning for, um, for a ground mobile robot. So first, I will explain the formulation of the planning problem, which will give a framework for the development of the navigation system. In general, for the, for the development of, of, such a, of such a system, a, a planning of, planning algorithm in this case, we consider that the mobile robot moves in Euclidean space, uh, Rn, which in this case will be n equals to two because we will consider planar motion. And we also define a set of obstacles represent, represented by the letter O. And we have that given an initial pose and a final pose in that Euclidean space. What we want to do is find the set of poses or a path that drives the robot between the, the initial pose and the final pose, pose, avoiding collisions between the robot and the obstacles. So that is basically uh, what planning is all about. We, we will focus on how to find those obstacles. When I was mentioning the, the environment representation, we will, define, we will in this case, it will be equivalent to, to finding those, those obstacles and how to find uh, the path. So the set of, of poses that drive the robot safely towards the goal. Um, in order to create such representation of the environment that allows planning a path, uh, we use deep learning. As um, many of you know, deep learning has had a central role in enabling some of the most impressive innovations in the field of uh, autonomous systems 
uh, over the last years, particularly for perception related tasks. Um, in this case, we will be using semantic segmentation, which consists in labeling each pixel of an image with a corresponding class of what is being captured. So if we have a front facing camera mounted on a vehicle or on a robot, uh, we can take the images, process them for semantic segmentation, and at the, at the output, what we have is uh, a bunch of labels that identify on each pixel uh, whether it corresponds to, um, a, for example, a car or trees or the sky or the road. And um, as we will see, this is uh, very useful because it allows for the creation of a dense semantic representation of the environment, which has a lot of information. In this particular case, the, the, the that I'm presenting, uh, we used uh, a model called FC Hartnet, which is basically a, a convolutional neural network with an encoder decoder structure. So what it does is it basically takes the, the input images and uh, in the encoder part of the network, it downsamples the image until reaching a reduced representation or a feature map that is then upsampled until reaching a representation of the same size of the input. But uh, in this case, this, uh, this output will have pixel labels uh, identifying each one of the objects present in the, in the image. However, by itself, these, um, the result of this segmentation is of little use since we simply have an, an image with a bunch of pixel labels. And we want this image to give us a clear representation of where the robot can drive to or better where obstacles are located such that uh, it's compatible with, uh, with the formulation of the planning problem that I presented a few slides ago. So in order to, to create such representation, what we do is we perform a, a perspective transformation, which takes points from the image plane into a space that corresponds with a bird eye view of the robot, which is way more compatible with the, with the planning formulation, with the planning problem formulation. Um, this transformation is done through a transformation matrix that is calculated using four points that are matched between the image plane and the bird eye view plane. And once we have this matrix, we, we, we don't have to compute it anymore. And it will allow us to uh, transfer points or pixels in the image plane into a bird eye view plane that um, where, where, for example, distances to obstacles will be way more clear. And uh, one thing that is important to mention is that this matrix is computed offline and um, since it only depends on the look on the where the, the camera is located with respect to the robot so this is this is very important and from then from them from then on um, it will allow us to to do this transformation so um, once we have this matrix we can take the output of the semantic segmentation transform it to a bird eye view and um, for example in this case what we do is we uh, separate the what will be the drivable area in this case, the, this robot moves in, on the sidewalk. So we define the sidewalk as the drivable area and we identify the contours of that drivable area. And uh, once we do this, we can then resample these contours and find a set of points that define such drivable area. And what these points at the end correspond to is basically to obstacles or points that we want the robot to avoid. We want the robot to avoid the edges of the sidewalk and the objects present on the sidewalk at the end. So now that these obstacles, um, that we, we can compute the, po the position of these uh, obstacles, uh, this can be used for planning a safe route to the goal. For this, uh, the dynamic window approach planner is used. This is a very commonly and very simple uh, used algorithm for planning. Um, so it basically consists in searching momentary velocities uh, longitudinal and angular velocity that optimize an objective function. In this case, this objective function is defined by this equation where we have a term uh, for the heading such that the robot heads as much as towards the goal as possible. We have a term for the distance because we want the robot to, oh, sorry, the distance towards the nearest obstacle because we want the robot to be as far from obstacles as possible. And we have a term related to velocity because we want the robot to converge to the goal um, pose as fast as possible. Um, and then you know, this algorithm defines a set of constraints to, uh, to make this search of the momentary velocities easier and faster. 
So the first constraint is that we will only consider on each time step constant velocities. So constant longitudinal and angular velocity is equivalent to uh, following uh, circular trajectories on each time step. Um, the second constraint is that we only consider those velocities that are safe. And in order to do that, um, we have to define the, the, the obstacles in the velocity uh, space as can be seen here. So basically we find the velocities that in the next time step will cause a collision. And these are defined this way in the, in the search space. And finally, we introduce the dynamics of the robot by reducing search phase to those velocities which are reachable under the dynamic constraints of the robot. So in this case, let's say the robot is here and it's moving with a given uh, longitudinal and angular velocity. In the next time step, it can only reach certain velocities, which, is, and this is given by the maximum acceleration that the actuators of the robot are capable of. So once we have all these constraints, we have a much smaller search space on which we can evaluate the condition and find the, find the, the optimal velocities that will drive the robot for the next time step. Um, so now that we have defined how to um, capture the image, perform semantic segmentation, find the obstacles in the environment and then uh, generate uh, velocity commands based on those obstacles. We can integrate all of this using a framework like ROS, in this case, ROS2. So um, ROS is basically an open source robotics middleware suite, which provides multiple functionalities to ease the development and implementation of robotics applications. So it provides, for example, packet management, or a multi-process communication, which makes it much easier to develop a modular and scalable uh, application. So in our case, for example, we will have a single process dedicated to capturing the images from the camera of the robot. We'll have another pro uh, process will be, which will be dedicated to performing semantic segmentation and, find, and calculating the, pos the position of the obstacles. And then we will have another process which will be dedicated to uh, implemented the dynamic window approach algorithm to generate the common the velocity commands. So at the end we end up with a very modular and very nice uh, software um, structure, you know, software architecture, which eases the, the implementation. Um, then another very nice feature about ROS is that it's easily um, integrated with simulation tools such as Gazebo. So here we can see um, some simulations performed in Gazebo using this approach. On the left side, we can see the, the robot simulated in an, in an urban environment. And um, we can see on the right side how we capture the image from a front-facing camera. We perform semantic segmentation. And we then do the, tra the perspective transformation. We estimate the contours of the drivable area we discretize these points, and then we use these points to perform uh, navigate to perform planning and defining the, the velocities that the robot must follow in order to drive safely on the sidewalk. Um, basically, here what the robot is doing is going around the block. We define four points on each corner of the of the, of the block, and it drives using this approach uh, on the sidewalk in a in a simulated urban environment. And now. So basically what we can conclude from this work is that the proposed navigation system was successfully implemented in simulation, showing the potential of um, deep learning in the development of autonomous systems. Uh, we also see that um, it's important also to mention that the main advantage of such a system as the one proposed is that it relies on the information coming from a monocular camera which is a very cheap sensor in comparison with uh, LiDAR or radar or stereo camera modules. Finally, um, this is a work in progress. So the future work on this project should, with, will focus on first improving the semantic segmentation, uh, convolutional neural network through transfer learning and the evolution of other module, models. Something that I, I probably didn't mention is that the convolutional neural network that we implemented was pre-trained on, on the Cityscapes dataset it was not further trained. So it, uh, we, we, can, uh, we can say that the results can be improved a lot if we, if we do further training on data from the simulation environment. And second, also the, the proposed approach should be evaluated in a real 
live outdoor environment. For this, we have already started working on a, on a development platform, which can be seen on this image. It has a, a Jetson Nano, uh, it has a wide angle camera and some stereo cameras for validation. Uh, finally, the project has been publicly, uh, publicly available on GitHub. And um, basically that was what I had for today. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please do let me know. Thank you very much, Juan. Very interesting. Very comprehensive work, actually, I would say. Uh, I'm monitoring, as usual, the Q&A. Let's see if there is any question. So I will start asking one, um, just a brief one. How, how do you see, um, do you think it's possible uh, porting this work uh, to uh, UAV, so with a 3D type of perception, or even just on the planar, uh, or uh, there are major changes that you need to do? Um, well, I, I, I am aware that the dynamic window approach is an algorithm that has been used extensively for all types of motion planning in robots, even for, um, for robot arms. So in, in general, it could be used for that. However, I'm thinking about the, the space perception that a, that, a, that a UAV needs, for example. Um, probably the, the semantic segmentation approach will have, well, at least the monocular semantic segmentation approach would have some, some issues because, for example, here to perform the, the, the perspective transformation, we assume that the robot camera has a very defined position. And in the, the case of a UAV, is moving, uh, turning around, so it, it will require some further adjustments for sure. Okay, so if there is no further question, um, virtual round of applause for one.